Say hi, Benny. Benny Vincenzo. Hello, my fellow YouTubers. This is Roy back again. Tonight, we're going to focus on a couple things. I really, really can't make this a long video, and there's so much that I want to get into. And I'm going to have to make this short and sweet. I started off making this video with just thinking about redoing my video I did last night in slow-mo, but it'll be in real life. But I'm going to make edge wheel go slow-mo off of this uh, double pole, double throw relay. And we're going into this 14-gauge uh, THN um, wire. I got two full um uh, rolls on there i think it's like 1250 turns not a lot of resistance i think there's like um point zero eight resistance ohms i do have the voltmeter hooked up to these three batteries so we're sitting on 34.82 volts and we're not using anything yet I do have a compass set up right here. I do have a few things to talk to you guys about. And we'll start off with this one. If anybody has ever grown uh, peppers, I started six months ago growing these Cal Carolina Reapers. So I'm working on my first batch of these. And I'll show my plants I guess on my next video. And then I also have now the Scully chart for the heat on the Carolina Reapers, I believe is 1.5 million um, in the Scully chart. So that's, I think, um, I, I, I believe pure capsian, which is the pureness of the hotness that causes the hotness um, is at 5 million, I think. Um, and Carolina Reapers at, at 1.5. And I also have growing a bunch of some chocolate bootlaws. Um, and they're supposedly 2.5 million school, on the Scully chart. FYI, never, never grew stuff before. It's pretty cool. From seed, by the way. Alrighty, so back at it. All right, so this image Keeps popping up in my mind. That image right there. Got three across, four down. Leave your comments on that. So right here, um, I don't even know what to get into with this. Uh, got some goods in there. And this right here is water with a LED in there to make light. In the water, I have a nice little batch. Uh, water is a great dielectric and also a great reflector. So we're coming off of the spark gap and we're pulsating. This is um, aluminum tape. It's got paper on one side. And it's acting as one plate. There is a there's the light. There is a coil going down the whole pipe to another roll 
of tape and that's acting as the other plate as the other plate and I have a heavy duty one inch neodymium facing inward to the pipe that pipe goes down four feet in the ground and then below it's an eight foot grounding rod Grounding rod is copper on the outside, plate it, and then it's steel on the inside. And it goes down another eight feet, well, another four feet from the four feet of the pipe. We'll get into this a little later. I don't really have time tonight, but this is an inductive reactant from the gap with the rate of change, the angle, that's going through the wire. And I got a lot of resistance in here. That's why you see I'm using uh, um, these alligator clip wires. And here's the main resistance panel that we're using. So we'll be connecting one of these wires here to that. And we'll proceed to start the wheel in a slow-mo so you can see the reaction. You're gonna see the light as speed picks up a little bit because the light flash is coming into the pipe. And this also has a lot to do with Wilhelm Reich and his Oregon accumulator. And what really got me about Wilhelm Reich, I started to study him in 1988 and someone had turned me on to a book and from there i got caught up into his organ uh, accumulator and it was a box of layered of organic inorganic material and what we're doing here is i did a test and it, it came out in the result that i was looking for and so this is why you see this layout now i got one pipe is copper on the top and the other pipe is copper with the steel in it just like the grounding rod and the ends come out here and i got a screw coming in one and one wire goes up and touches the ground pipe and the other wire comes up and it goes over to the positive side of the pole. So we are using electromagnetic, but into light. The light is being reflected off of this dielectric down the tube through that coil to the other bulb set up with its light as well. So I'm bouncy balling the two there. And it is causing an induction in with materials of the ground. Wilhelm Reich's belief was that organic material, this wood, uh, will uh, attract and this is uh, also known as non-metallic. And your metallic materials will attract, but they also repel. So the thing is, if you had layers of organic, inorganic, um, you notice here I have another plate on the other side. So I am actually trapping the energy into the double two by fours. And because the energy is going into through those two pipes, which are next to each other at a certain gap. And that gap is an inductive. So it ain't the fact that the pipes are touching the material. It's more of the fact that the pipes are touching the material and having an inductive field in between the two pipes. And that's through this high pressure, high DC spike and you're going to get an inductive you're going to get electrons 
that are in each material to move through the material and we're going to look at these materials as as layers or as shells like atoms are designed so basically if you take a circle and you put another circle and then you put another circle and then you put another circle and then you put a circle in the middle along with another circle so here you're going to have your proton and then here you're going to have your neutrons now neutron i'll say plural s because in the mix on certain elements or maybe all elements because i haven't gone through all the elements but on copper number 29 on the element chart that means it has 29 protons 29 electrons and it also has 35 neutrons more neutrons than protons and electrons so you'll have your protons all here your neutrons all here then you'll have we'll call that just the um, in a sense this is coming to me as a vision in a lot of my dreams it kind of reflects to Good paper. Uh, it's probably in here. One hand in it. There it is. Down bottom. I was working on points. And basically, one point makes a radius. Two points form a line from both points radiating. Three points form a plane. And then we're gonna come over here to these different tetratrons and octatrons. Uh, four points, you get volume. Then five points, you get time and dimension. Six points, buckle up your five point seats, seat belts, and hold on because you're in hyper something. So on this right here, is the octatron and that's this pyramid with a mirror image and here it is but notice there's an unbalance it sort of reminds me of something I've seen like in Knights Templar or some Holy Cross of some sort, but there's more to it. So back to this octatron, you got your points on there and you got 12 sides, actually eight sides. I got the wrong one set up. 
Yeah, that's a doe. That one's that one right there. This one here is the eight sided. Then you got your cube six sided. So we'll get into later about why I'm working on the, the sides and the points that they bring. It's very important. Especially when you're dealing with uh, induction through matter itself. If I'm looking at this matter being connected to the matter of the ground, then that means that everything that's important where where you get down to the atom and here's copper on how many well let's get back to this it's very important just for the people just learning so you got your protons you got your neutrons then out here you'll have your electrons say if you had uh, two on that one and say if you had four on the other one and say if you had six on the other one you start you start to see these angles start to appear so i got to thinking i'm like well let's learn about this a little bit more on on each element and the elements I'm referencing to is the elements on the periodic table. The ones I can get my hands on, especially my eyeballs. So if you start off with number one, it's hydrogen. You go to number two, it's helium. Then you go over to... Then you go over to number three, it's lithium, beryllium. And lithium, beryllium, and then over here, moves on. Carbon's number six. Nitrogen, number seven. Oxygen, number eight. So when you get into these, you'll see what number they are, how many electrons, or how many protons, how many neutrons, how many electrons, and their orbital spin. Very important. Because each individual atom on all this material we're looking at everything everything you see it has a lot of atoms and these atoms will share their electrons so if you looked at using the ground as an induction uh, source of power you can look at for instance on copper it'll have say shell number one We'll call this number one, number two, number three, number four. And you'll have a positive and a, and a negative shell in a sense where I think they run opposite ways in order to do that. Not sure, but it makes sense that it would. And when you put another object over here, say a piece of... Um, Say a piece of uh, iron, all right? And it's got its atoms, and pretty much it is number. Iron is Fe, which is number 26. All right, 26. So iron, number, number 26, has 26 protons. And 26 electrons. Not sure on the neutrons. I have to look into it. But what I do know about iron is that this copper will share ones and two electrons. Okay. And iron will share three to four electrons and the way it works is the same way as water works this water if you add minerals to the water it's, it'll balance itself if they strip the minerals from the water it will unbalance itself and it will try to balance itself that's nature so the atom works the same way so basically 
if ring number, they say that the, I think it's the variance ring is the one that where it um, shares from. And if there's two on that inner ring, I believe that it's the next layer up or the middle ring to where all the rings, all the um, electrons form, and then they balance their way out. There's a outward on each way. <clears throat> anyway, what I'm getting at is if you put another iron next to this close in proximity, don't have to touch it, because um, it'll balance itself out once you touch it or touch ground. But basically, it'll um, it'll unbalance one of these elements. For instance, if we put iron up, iron is the greatest absorber, the greatest absorber out there. Saturator, we'll call it. Super saturator. That it will take both electrons from here, and this will make it... Um, uh, so we're looking at number 29, and we're looking at copper, and it... Cu, so it becomes the Cu plus one, or it could be a Cu one plus. And the difference is, is what every time you bring that iron up um, like this, a nice block of iron, every time you bring it close proximity to the copper, it will automatically you don't see it but it'll transfer energy so there's the energy moving through the the matter itself and you can look here what actually moves so you got two electrons that went over to the iron side so now we look at the next element from from iron and i'm going to take on we'll do another video but it's going to be my two favorites which will be number 82 and 83 so we got lead and bismuth 83 electrons 83 protons 83 electron or 82 electrons 82 protons don't know since the neutrons vary once i look into it now we're looking at a different part of the um spectrum here so if you look at these atoms and all the elements that are up on that chart right there just look at them like this where it starts off slow goes around goes around like 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 basically the whole enchilada of the universe the way it goes it's basically an atom i mean and then you'll have your um, places your nodes we can call them because all these places around here all these electrons that are around there all in position and you can call those whatever position they follow you can call those nodes and nodes is a place where you have a dipole intersection in between the space and that space is the frequency set to that to that atom uh, later on on that conversation we're going to look at my Wilhelm Reich setup and uh, by using the organic inorganic materials you can uh, once you get one spark going you can excite the system the system is a, a photo electric as well as i'm utilizing the dielectric between this water and the water below lights on both are uh, putting out a uh, inductive uh, reaction that is um going from in the ground, which is basically uh, inductively surrounded by uh, aluminum. So the one in the ground has aluminum as a, a sh um, not a shield, but more as a reflector. So it reflects out and that reflection uh, in the ground has an inductive a coupling. And that coupling will also come through the the um, organic materials that I have 
there. Interesting stuff with Wilhelm Reich. Interesting stuff with the six sides here. And interesting stuff on that. Interesting about learning about all the elements because on the Wilhelm Reich setup, it's more about utilizing the energy that's already trapped inside the standing uh, energy of all matter. So I want you guys to leave your comments right here. We got the 35 volts going. Let's go ahead and turn this light down. Don't need that bright one, right? We got that. We got the legit. Um, geez, let's uh, take this wire. And we're going to connect this. You got resistance here. We're going to go ahead and just snap it. I'm going to put it right here. And I think we should be able to. All right. And then we're going to put something loose over here. Got to make sure the contact. Got something guys hold on so we got to take this off we got to put the light in there so it aims up to the water then it goes down the tube Forget I got my dielectric materials in there. Don't forget the glass is dielectric and so is the water. All right, so we got our connections here. It's a little rusty, so probably that's got that set up to right there. Let's give it a whirl. And before I Flash. That light catches on and the system's charged up. All matters through the dielectric. Now remember, the MIT video shows in dissecting a capacitor that it shows that the dielectric is what holds the energy. It's not uh, the metals, uh, the conductor is uh, what moves the energy. So we're gonna display that right now. Uh, we're gonna take it slow, like my slow-mo, ready? I'm only joking. So you can see right here, we're at 33 volts. And let's go ahead and get a little small spin going. And you can see our current and our wattage is bouncing. I got enough resistance in here that I can use all these crazy wires, especially with very little resistance on the um, coils but you can see we're taxing it big time so right now let's go ahead and change the resistance and right now we'll put it over here and there you can see it stopped on its own now we'll 
see the difference here. We're now we're up to bouncing around on the. I wouldn't even trust it. Amperage, you can see. We're trying to minimize everything going through right now. We're putting a lot of resistance in the system. We're not allowing a lot of electromagnetic force come through that coil. But you can see it's bouncing the pull apart that tape. And it's doing it slow mo, right? It's gonna stop. It's giving us a great slow mo. Wow. You can hear me this time. It doesn't sound like. That is the best slow mo I can give you guys and talk to you at the same time. How about that? And it stopped. So we're going to take a little more resistance off. And that little more resistance right there. Things get a little more constant. Let's go ahead and take a little more resistance off. Give it a little help. So it'll slow itself down, I believe, to the Schumann resonance, because I believe that's what that coil and that inductive coupling that I made is doing. Now watch. Go ahead and take some more resistance off. Right now we'll give it a little help, see where it goes. I pull and Almost two amps, so one and a half. Notice when it bleeps. Let's go ahead and take some more resistance off.
All right, you guys. Peace out. Leave your comments.